Hello everyone, welcome to another live streaming uh, with Mr. Angelos Derlopas, our Director of uh, Education, and our educator Eva Tsigu, where we will be reading some scenarios and responding in the IC ICF uh, appropriate way. A client is sharing a complex personal story. They are speaking rapidly and becoming increasingly emotional. Mm. Mm. That's never happened. <laughs> 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 Not today. <laughs> so far. I'm being, I'm being sarcastic. This is a very common, common scenario. Uh, That's right. Yes. Very common scenario. And it makes sense. Yeah. For yeah. clients who have either, yeah, it's it's how they they are in the world or. Uh, how they are experiencing their reality as they are entering the coaching session. Clients right. very rapidly becoming increasingly emotional, probably about the things that are important to them and want to share uh, with a coach and are bringing in the coaching session. Mm -hmm. And as it says, it's a rather complex personal story, so that adds a difficulty in telling the story. What is the story? Yeah. Who yeah. they are in their story. And what's the story behind the story? Anyway, so what are the possible responses, Helen? Response A, slow down, please. I'm trying to follow you. Response B, let's take a break. You seem overwhelmed. Response C, I'm listening carefully. Please continue. And response D, it sounds like you're feeling a lot of stress. Hmm. 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 Wow. You know, for me, uh, yeah. active listening is a very is one of a uh, I would say a pivotal um, core competency um, for a coach uh, to uh, listen actively. Uh, I think it, it's about communication. Also, it's um, how. Um, uh, it, it's not really information, you know, transferring, you know, when they say, when we, we're we train, we, we talk about, um, you know, this is where the questions come, you know, asking questions to um, uh, you, use the client's words, you know, highlight um, what is important to them, you, you know, all the things that we've learned, but, but active listening is really quite more, it's more complex thing. Because and in these core competencies, the new ones, I think was one of the items that really stuck out for me is that they speak about um, listening for the system, you know, which means uh, where the, you know the client is is a whole person, but he's within another whole system, whether it's you know his family, whether it's his workplace, whatever. So, you know. In listening, I think you're really looking for nuances uh, that are there. Um, I think what is, is important is really to um, choose as a, as a coach. I how what I what I do is I really choose to pay attention to what the client is is tell is is saying. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and I listen for emotions, and I, I listen for, you know, nuances. Um, I don't like the word, you know, that we say what he's not saying. I mean, I I, mean, I don't know what, what he's not what the you know age he wants to say. To me, that 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 doesn't that doesn't sit well with me. I I don't go into that. Um, I. It's what's in front of me that's important. Um, so when I'm actively listening, I'm there 100%. Um, listening to what my client is wants to share and is sharing with me. Challenge that? Please. So, okay, so in my view, when we say listening to what the client is saying, and what is they're not saying 
uh, for me, that means uh, what are some avenues that they have not explored yet, so I can offer these as questions. And also, there are some things which are not verbal. Yeah. And they are not saying them, but they are, if I watch closely, they are communicating them through their nonverbal communication and nonverbal cues. And that also is, these are also bits of information that are important for me as a coach so that I can put together the puzzle of who the client is. And going back to the who, as it is, what's the story of the client and who is the client in their own story? So if we go and if we go back and read, for example, what are the PCC markers for this competency? It's about understanding uh, um, it's about understanding who the client is in their client situation um, and explores and inquires First, firstly, inquires the words the client uses, the client's emotions, their energy shifts, nonverbal cues, and how they perceive their own self or their world. So we are listening all of this, mm -hmm. and this is yeah. why I think <clears throat> I'm saying I'm listening carefully. Please continue. Okay. Shows that uh, solidifies mm -hmm. if that is important. It usually is for the client to feel confident that the process is working, and the and the coach is with them. And, and if I may share a personal story, many many years ago, I uh, was not as experienced as I am right now. So at some point, the client was listening, uh, was talking and talking and talking. It was a very interesting story, and it was a long story. The client had a lot to share, so I was, uh, at some point, um, you don't want to interrupt the client. So, the, so at some point, the client turned to me and said, "Now I watch you uh, that all this time you are listening, but you're not saying anything, and I'm wondering what you're thinking about me." Mm -hmm. And that shows. That uh, from time to time, the client may need some kind of input from you, which is a way to feel that you're with them. This is safe and it's working. So this is the reason okay. that I believe response C, I'm listening carefully, please continue, is the a very good one. Yeah. A very good that's, answer. <clears throat> that's the one I picked as the best. Uh, yes. But... Uh, going back to what you were saying, when my, my comment about what the client is not saying, um, I was referring to his his verbal communication. Um, mm. For sure, and it's it's really very, very important. Uh, as coaches, uh, we're there to to co-create with the client something new. So when we communicate with them, um, I think uh, the level of communication that we uh, give back to the client is to create something new for them. It's not to to retransmit the information that they're giving us, is what I'm saying. You know, um, mm -hmm. so um, a communication isn't that for me. Uh, so uh, I think that. Of course, it's very important to you to use the words uh, and to highlight what is important for the client to pick up um, nonverbal, um, you know, uh, signs uh, and uh, and noticing them. And I think it's very helpful to also, you know, um, ask the client or or let's say. Um, share that with the client so it might open up some new uh, new awareness for him. So when you're listening uh, to a story uh, that the client is there or whatever you know he's there and you're um, and that 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 happens throughout the process of coaching you know, throughout the, the coaching container in the beginning, in the middle, at the end, 
um, it's it for me it's very important to to really look at and listen for who the client is. Okay, at, at a maybe at a, a you know PCC level, listening for the what what the client wants to accomplish and and goes for that pro that's a good one too. Okay, that's you know clients do come to coaching for that. That's what they're what's the, they want to achieve something. So, um, but it, it it's it's such a, a crucial competency for me mm -hmm. and it mm -hmm. and i, yes, I find course. myself as I'm, I'm i'm developing my skills as as a coach that i really um pay attention to this how i am um how i can improve you know where where what do i need to know about myself and and increase my confidence so that i'm able to you know be more uh present also because you need to be present in order to listen actively. Um, so, so you know, I find I'm, I'm as we're going through this, Angelos. I find that the the competencies are really inter, you know, interwined. Um, yes. Yeah. That, that's a good, very good, very uh, correct observation. And I think we also need to keep in mind not based on the markers or the bars, but based on the sub competencies that this competence number six, as it has been revised, it includes now the innovation. What used to be uh, an independent competency, powerful yeah. questioning. So That's it's right. here, it's yeah. here. You should watch closely, inquire, explore so that you can ask the questions that might create a shift in the way the client is perceiving their reality and then uh, and that way will be invited into creating uh, possibly a bridge to evoking awareness which is number seven yeah just to go it's back to great, just yeah. you just said everything it, is it, intertwined it gives place to the exactly uh, to the next one in the yeah, coaching and, process yeah Absolutely, I agree with you yeah. on that. And that that's what I meant when when you said when I said like li, a, a communication is like creating something new. So you yeah. know it, it it it'll follow in evoking awareness that uh, I, something new will 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 emerge from from the process. Um, and and another thing I, I want to say is really what I find challenging sometimes. A, especially when a client is, is telling a long story uh, to be really very uh, present there and very attentive to what he's saying is is what what comes up for the client that is important like what is he is he saying that uh, that I could sort of like um, let me see, uh, choose to pay attention to and feedback yeah. to him. I mean, I think that that's what coaching is all about. You know, that's what differentiates us from like therapy or some of the other things. That is so true. That is so true. Uh, so to, for the purpose of the economy of time, uh, I'd like to make uh, a very brief comment about response uh, D. It sounds like mm -hmm. you're feeling a lot of stress. Would, uh, would say that, yeah, well, I can see that there's a good intention from the coach and probably their intention is to make uh, uh, the client feel that they are being heard and, uh, and the coach empathizes, but there is a little bit of a, there's a trick there, but because this might also be implied as a little bit of labeling, sounds like you're feeling a lot of stress. It's an and assumption for me. Plus, He's, yeah. And the client didn't ask you. That's right. <laughs> and it, it's similar to let's take a break. You seem overwhelmed. Um, you I know. think that that's the worst possible answer. That's exactly I mean, that. That's even risk. worse than than the last one you mentioned. You know. Yeah. I mean, response A is bad. Slow down, please. I'm trying to follow you here. 
I would think I would yeah. put that as I would put that as the worst. No, that yeah. could be a long stretch. Yeah, we can talk let's about say that. that. Let's say to be the devil's advocate here, if you allow me, I would maybe the coach here wanted to reach out, reach out for a different reaction, like wanted they they wanted to do an energy break, but they ended up suggesting that they should do a break, which we understand is a break from what we're doing. And there comes a judgment. Here comes a judgment. You seem overwhelmed. overwhelmed. What's happening to you? Yeah. How, how did you allow that, allow that to yourself? Yeah. Again. I and, mean, and I, I find that that, that that is not act, you know, you're not listening actively to what the client is, is presenting. No, it seems, yeah. could be. And, no, and you're not, and, and you're yes, not allowing, yeah, and uh, you could, uh, you could say that you can use it, let's say, uh, you can use maybe silence um, and then say, Okay, uh, take your time is, is the, the answer that we found is best. I'm here for you. Take your time. Yeah, mm -hmm. that is more more empathetic, I find. For you, shows compassion. Take your time. Share whatever you need to. I'm sorry. Uh, this, these are the ones. Slow down, please. I'm trying to follow you. I'm listening carefully. Please continue. Right. So, yeah. Worse than best. Well, we agree with the word with the best. I'm listening carefully. Please continue. Yeah, because that that gives gives it. Uh, first of all, it also um, validates in a way. The client's um, need for, you know, for expressing himself. Yeah. Yes. And what about response A? You said that was your worst, the worst one for you. Was that right? Yeah. It, like, uh, please slow down. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to follow you. Okay. Uh, unless. You know, uh, even if he, let's say it's a, like I had an, a situation recently where I was um, uh, coaching a client in India and, and there's an accent and they speak fast. Okay. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even say that to the client, please. So then I, I said, I realize that we are in different, you know, we are in different cultures and, and, um, I would appreciate it for me to better understand what you know what you're saying. Uh, to if you could please slow, you know, speak a little slower. I mean, I wouldn't be so direct. This is like so. Um, uh, I don't know, uh, impolite. Uh, and it's uh, especially bad because the client is experiencing the situation that they are experiencing. Yeah. And it may be perceived as uh, judgment. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, and, and so. Like so the one way to do that is what you did. Uh, a different way is to. Um, trying to do uh, the report, the reverse report. So you start from where the client is, speaking louder, speaking faster, speaking too, and then gradually change your pace or your uh, loudness or your tone of voice and go to where you need the conversation to be, mm -hmm. But yeah, in your view. I think I think it's very transparent and it's very honest and open to to share what you are also experiencing because this is a the relationship you're building here, a coaching mm -hmm. relationship, 
uh, yes. where you you know you need to um, set you know the um, it, it, to create the space uh, for for mutual uh, communication. Let's say um, to the point that you can. Okay, it's not always doesn't always you, you know you have to, but when you're having a hard time and understanding it's it's really not fair not to share that i think um, um i would like to contribute a different parameter here uh your case you did example that you used had to do with uh cultural conditions yeah i assume because accents, maybe accents. some of the accents and pace of talking might mm -hmm. be linked to the culture of the your client but in our case here this is something different is the client is stressed out and feeling uh poorly or strongly uh very strong emotions overwhelming emotions perhaps and this is a different case so i would say i would try to i would try this first that i would calm down the client only with my voice so that yeah. he can link with me with what I'm doing so that I will be gradually creating a more relaxed conversation where the we can talk and it's helping us understand what we're talking about yeah and it can apply to the opposite it, it might be a client with no energy and feeling very True. Heavy, and you need to liven up a little bit, perhaps the conversation. In my view, especially depending on where you are in the coaching session. For exactly. example, if you are towards the end, number seven and eight, you need to uh, speed up a little bit the things. But if you are into um, a reflection mode, a conversation that goes more deep, then you can expect that you need to slow down talking to allow for thinking to happen. That's yeah. how I approach that. Yes. Yeah, yeah, for sure. There, um, the, the role I think, and and it's part of the competencies too, is it, when you're. Th this would happen in the beginning what I said before with my case, um, mm. because I, I would not do it in the middle of, a, of our, you know, the process. It, it, this would happen in the beginning, okay? Uh, in our contracting, let's say, if I, it really, it was really very difficult. So I had to, you know, bring it out. Uh, but, you know, in the, what you were saying, uh, it, it's it, this thing that we learned, dancing with your client, Mm -hmm. So I think what you're saying is something like that. So, you know, you're, the coach needs to have a, to be aware of the rhythm uh, and the rhythm mm -hmm. could be his body language, could be his, the way he's speaking, whatever it is. So you, we need to be aligned as coaches with that. I think that's what you're, what you were saying. Uh, I like I like that a lot, and that reminds me of the tango, the the, yeah, right. the analogy with coaching as a tango dance. So you need to yeah. start off with the right foot. So if you think you have started with the wrong foot, uh, one way to offer a break without using the word as in response B is asking the client something that will create that space. So. Uh, before we move further, for example, that's one of my techniques. Yeah. How are you feeling right now? Checking in. I'm feeling this and that. Yes. Is it relaxing? Is it? Do you feel enough relaxed so you can speak up your mind, or do you want to change something? Right. Right. Yeah. Part of I think part of the listening, uh, listen actively, is is really when there's something that you're not clear on as a coach and you want more information to, you know, to create, to, to get to know your client, because this is what you're doing here. You know, you're, you're creating a relationship and the relation, you know, we get to know each other, you know, it is to be able 
to um, kind of uh, share with them uh, very openly uh, and, and ask them, you know, what, what's coming up for them? I, you know, one of, one of the response would be to this particular question is like, you know, I know it's, you know, I, I'm listening carefully. Uh, please continue. And what's coming up for you right now as you're saying this story? Yep. Hmm. So, how about summing this up and closing it? One uh, final notice from me is that sometimes the questions or the answers are uh, somehow tricky, like it was the difference between response A and response B. Yeah. And it's it's very nuanced. Like, let's take a break. Does the does the coach really need to take a break? Stop the session, or do they need they imply an energy, an energy kind of break? Uh, you seem overwhelmed. It's not good. That is for take. That is for sure. It's not good because uh, you seem overwhelmed. Shows a judgment. Uh, but I think here, as, as I'm looking at that, response A has two bad things that are both for sure. Slow down, please. I'm trying to follow you. Um, it shows that the coach is intention is not to serve the client. No, it's 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 all about the coach there. Yes. It, it's it's def, it's not client centered. It, it's not there to serve the client. It's about him. It's about the coach. It's about the coach, and I'm wondering, uh, since the the coach is trying to follow, is what gets in the way? It's not just about how quickly the client is talking. Could it be that that the coach is doing some internal listening and bringing back their mm -hmm. own memories, thoughts, and experiences? So that right. gets in the way. So, okay, yeah, so yeah, I think we did a great job. <laughs> there's, there's always a lot to to uh, to think about and 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 really uh, reflect on on some of these uh, the things that we were talking about in the last three sessions, and 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 for me, uh, as I was reading the co the core competencies, I see. You know, in presence, you have, you know, core competency, you know, um, uh, two, three, like trust and, uh, you know, creating the safe space and, and trust uh, uh, with your client. So, uh, and also in listening, you go into powerful questions, you know, that what we remember as powerful questions, which is the next competency evokes awareness. So, you know, there, there's mm -hmm. there's a logic I, I find in the new core competencies that is much clearer of the coaching process. I, yes. I, I, this is I just wanted to share that um, you know uh, thought that I had in reflecting about and, what we're doing. It's more streamlined. Yeah. Uh, I I would like to remind our viewers that uh, as always as we say. We're not always looking for what's the correct answer and what's the wrong answer, but what is uh, the better answer and what's the even worse answer to come up with the best and the worst. And it takes a lot of reflection. But as we're moving on in this process, I hope that we are all becoming uh, much better with our own way uh, of thinking, judging, reflecting, and uh, moving on in this cycle so to pick up the best and the worst case scenarios thank you everybody for watching us and uh, don't thank forget you. to like share and comment uh, on this video and watch out for our next episode sometime very soon and to do that you want to to be notified you want to subscribe to our channel and make sure you hit the bell button so you get all the notifications about the new videos. Thank you, everyone. Thank Ellen, you. Eva.